Good morning. It's a great thrill and a considerable honour to be talking to you today on my first day as the President of BAUS. Thank you for electing me two years ago and rest assured I'll give the role my all. My first act as President on behalf of all the members and staff of BAUS clearly should be to thank Duncan Summerton, the outgoing President. Unusually, it's an online virtual thank you. But thank you, Duncan, nevertheless, for all your work for the organisation on council, in andrology, as secretary and as president over the last two years. A very complex brief, latterly, but one delivered with great resolve. My second act as president is to welcome Joe Cresswell as the new vice president. Clearly an inspired choice, and I'm really looking forward to working with Joe over the next two years and seeing her flourish. So eight months ago, I was asked to give a talk at the RSM. I was given free reign to speculate as to the future of urology. What were the likely challenges and what were the likely opportunities? Here is what I thought. But eight months later, everything has been turned upside down. Coronavirus has challenged all of our assumptions. It saddened us most notably with the death of urologist Abdul Chowdhury. It's frightened us. Would our work put us at risk of serious illness? And it's challenged us to change. To think differently about everything we do. And in a sense in so doing has generated a completely new set of questions. Questions about the very basis of how to practice urology. How we consult who to investigate, where we work. Take outpatients, for instance. Are we even sure anymore what a consultation is? Since time immemorial, a consultation has been a face-to-face -face meeting, informed maybe occasionally by some cursory vetting of a referral letter. And now, Face-to-face -face is the exception, not the rule, consulting a far more nuanced business across a web of possibilities. I think the early signs are good, better for patients and better for us too. No longer crazily busy, calmer, more controlled. But with new answers come new questions. Are we in the wrong sort of buildings? with the wrong sort of support. Out go the physical needs, the ones in red, and in come the virtual, the ones in green. Some interesting questions lie ahead. What's the role of a clinic nurse if there's no one in clinic? Does consulting even need us? In truth, infrastructure has proved so outdated in my own hospital that it has become easier to consult from home than at work. Might this be a better place to work? The outpatient department of the future? It's not just questions about how we practice. It's questions about how we learn, how we train, how we communicate with each other, and why we congregate together. The opportunities for new ways of learning are huge. And the appetite is there too. This year, Bows will have three new programmes, starting for three different constituencies. Sanjay, Harry and Anna have compiled terrific programmes, which I'm sure you'll enjoy as a member benefit. Watch out for those in the late summer and early autumn. Every urology association in the world is asking the question, what's the future for congresses? In the short term, it's a problem defined by social distancing and limitations on mass gatherings. But in the medium term, the concept of events only for those attending in person looks dead in the water. There will need to be more ways of engaging, of joining in, of learning. Congresses will change for both sorts of delegate. In-person attendees may want more networking, more socialising, more trade exhibition, more lunch. And the virtual attendee, perhaps tighter scheduling, more focused sessions, and a more compact, bespoke product. 
We should, in the end, have a Congress which reaches far more of our membership. I can't get to the annual Congress this year, but I can join in. It's a new world. Rest assured, we are addressing these issues at BAUS, and you will be able to attend the BAUS Congress in November, be it in person or as a virtual delegate. COVID-19 has also brought a sharp focus on the importance of research and how to conduct research rapidly. It's a personal goal of mine as president to make research a major theme of BAUS in the next five to ten years. Audit, I think, has dominated the last ten, but can research do the same in the next ten? What do we propose to do? Well, we have exciting news of a very promising collaboration between Tuff and BAUS which we've been working on over the last six months. That collaboration has been developed by myself, Grant Stewart, the head of research at Tuff, and Caroline Moore, the research lead for the Royal College and BAUS. The goal is to establish a programme of national multi-centre clinical trials in urology. The desire is to change urology wherever it's practised. To do that, we have to influence guidelines. And to influence guidelines, we have to generate the best evidence. And it's there that we feel we can make a difference. Why do we think that? Well, we see the UK as uniquely well positioned to do this type of work. There is a research culture in our hospitals. We have a spirit of collaboration in British urology demonstrated so clearly by previous research successes like suspend and tissue. This spirit of collaboration is lacking in many countries, and we're largely free of the financial imperatives that make urologists in so many countries treat in a certain way to generate a fee. And we have bright urologists, hundreds of them, brimming with ideas. So what's the plan? What's different this time? We borrowed an idea from orthopaedics. They had the same goal in 2015, and they met that goal by establishing a strong orthopaedic focus within a trials powerhouse in York. It has been a huge success. Their express goals were twofold, to take good ideas and turn them into groundbreaking trials and to develop new investigators. It's worked. They have numerous NIHR badge studies and several new chief investigators. We plan to do the same. So we're going to tender to create a tough BAUS trials office within an established trials centre. I think it could be very exciting. We want to spread our research effort across the country, beyond the centres of acknowledged research excellence. And we are thrilled that Tuff have agreed to fund the first three years of the programme. There are plenty of things we could study. And it's perhaps worth saying, our desire is not to duplicate what is already done to a world leading standard in the UK, the areas highlighted in blue, but to explore fresh areas and particularly areas where our willingness to collaborate will be an advantage. I think it could be a very exciting development. And finally, coronavirus has challenged us to work differently at BAUS. Virtual and remote are the new normal, but in a way we're better connected. In 2020 alone, we'll be saving the cost of 140 member subscriptions by meeting remotely rather than in person in Lincoln's Inn. All this turbulence and all these possibilities mean that now is an ideal time for a formal strategic review at BAUS, and this is underway. A framework has been developed, and our core goals are three. The development, education and support of urologists to shape policy and practice in the UK and the world, and to spend members' money wisely. Trustees and Council will be working on this over the summer, and the review should be complete by November. In the next five to ten minutes, I'd like to give you just a feel for one or two of those changes that are being debated. Our core steering groups are changing. BAUS Trustees, which looks after the governance of BAUS and its finances, will in 2021 appoint its first non-urological trustees. A chance to bring much needed skills to the mix, 
finance, pharma, HR, marketing, sponsorship, this type of thing. Broaden the skill set beyond prostatectomy and ureteroscopy. And Bow's Council will no longer be meeting in London three times a year. Instead, we'll be focusing on a two-day residential strategic event in Cambridge in September. Small group working, breakouts, networking, all to the fore, and a chance to develop consensus on our strategy. A chance as well, I think, for the regional reps who represent you to have a greater say and influence in the policies that we develop. We plan to change some roles and make new appointments. We are redefining the brief for Vibav and Neha to edit the digital content that's flowing from the switch to virtual. And in July, we'll be advertising for a national director of urology fellowships. The landscape for advanced fellowships in the UK is, I think, incredibly exciting. There are just so many high volume centres that have emerged and which are perfect places to fine tune your specialist training. Hugely attractive to British trainees and to trainees from across the world. The problem at the moment is that it's just too ad hoc. I think we need someone to pull it together, someone to understand the landscape and describe it. Someone to publicise and promote the opportunities better. Someone to help units understand how to develop a fellowship. In short, someone to develop a vision. The advert for this post will be out in July. The collaboration with GERFT continues at pace. John McGrath and Kieran O'Flynn have been appointed to lead that programme. Now, sharply focused on delivering excellence in a post-COVID world. It's also a very challenging time to be a clinical lead. So it's good news that our clinical leads group at Bows is flourishing. Their links with GERFT will be important. Prostate Cancer UK have been excellent in their support for bespoke training of our clinical leads, and we want to continue to build that relationship. Mark Lynch is now running the clinical leads group and is running this year's course at Baus, centred on the difficult colleague and the colleague in difficulty. It could be an interesting course. Who knows where the best ideas will come from? I don't. And that's why I think we should hear from every unit at the summer meeting. It's a national association. Let's hear from units across the nation. And this initiative will be introduced for the summer meeting in 2021. To grow our specialty, we clearly need to attract the best. But how do we do that when so few students and young doctors are exposed to urology? One solution would be to reach out far more. No longer can we sit back and wait for interest to be shown in our specialty. We need to recruit, to market, to promote urology. And we need to do it across the 33 medical schools of the UK. Toby Page leads our student programme, and it's an excellent programme. And I think Herman Fernando, Sot Tolifari and Ricky Ellis have all shown what can be done in their own medical schools. We now need to do it more widely. One idea is the student fair or boot camp to showcase the specialty. Come and meet urologists. Come and try what they do. See whether the, this is a specialty that might be for you. Find out why they love it. This type of fair is difficult at the moment given lockdown, but I think is something we should consider in the future. And I think at the heart of our efforts needs to be one constant message to students and young doctors, a message to the unconvinced. And that is that the appeal of urology really lies in its breadth. There is room for everyone in this specialty. This is not a specialty that fences you in. That appeal needs to go beyond surgery's traditional constituencies. Over half of medical graduates are women, and we need to remove any barriers which may be holding women back from choosing our specialty or flourishing within it. Maybe we need to spend more time trying to understand what would make urology the natural home 
for talented women who want to do surgery. Euralink, I think, is one of Bowser's best programmes and one of the best led by Susie Venn. Euralink is active in seven countries in Africa and helps teams develop their own expertise. We have two significant developments in the pipeline. One is for five to six bursaries for trainees to join Euralink visits in 2021, hopefully to fire their enthusiasm for projects in the developing world. These bursaries have been funded by Tuff. The second idea is to hold a specific Euralink fundraiser. Euralink is a strong story. It's a story that non-medics could believe in. Genuinely charitable. And I think Euralink has the potential to raise money of its own accord. And finally, we'll be reviewing the sections. Most are 20 years old. The question arises, is the structure right for the next 20 years? Here they are, very much professionally defined, and perhaps these days far too broad for the way that urology is practised in 2020. Where does the commonest condition we treat, BPH, sit in this structure? In truth, we're not sure. Might this be a better way of viewing our clinical subgroups in the future? Much more focused, focused on conditions and diseases. It would certainly be an easier structure for other stakeholders in urology to understand, the patients, charities and industry. Patients have diseases and in general want to support work in those specific diseases. Charities tend to be focused on individual conditions and industry by and large makes drugs and products to treat individual diseases. I think it might be a better structure, particularly if we want to drive research studies in the future. And it would be a structure that would allow us more easily to explore new areas. A PUJ group, perhaps. A medical legal group might be interesting. And without doubt, an infection group. Who could have lived through the last six months and emerged thinking there won't be a major push on infection research in the next five years? We need to be at the heart of that. And to be at the heart of that, I think we'll need an infection group. Previously unthinkable, of course, for our organisation to run so many subgroups. Travel expenses, agendas, time off work, professional leave, meeting rooms, minutes, secretarial support. But now, somehow, perfectly plausible. Virtual groups, meeting regularly at minimal expense. It looks possible. I think the concept of specialist interest groups is worthy of serious consideration in our summer strategic review. So, a lot happening, and a lot in the entree of the new president. Definitely a lot to get right. What I would say is if you want to get involved, contact me. If you have ideas, contact me. And if you simply want to put me on the spot, then you'll get your chance as early as July when I'm doing three live Q&As and taking live questions. This is part of a plan to communicate well with members. Watch out also for our programme of podcasts and vodcasts explaining where the organisation is heading. These will be covering contemporary issues in urology or developments at BAUS which members may want to learn more of. I'd particularly point out the one planned to discuss the Cumberledge report into the MESH crisis. Watch out for the full timetable, which will be published shortly. In closing, it really only remains for me to confirm how thrilled and how honoured I am to be your president. I'm relishing the challenge. And those who know me know I'll bring energy and ideas and focus to the role. My guiding mantra will be, let's make things happen.